So what's going on guys kids here and welcome back to a brand new video for today I will show you the top 3 best solo player builds in Albion Online 2024. So for each and every single build I will show you what abilities and armor you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and what is the best ability rotation to use for both PvP and PvE. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay so you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how much silver you have or how high or low your weapon levels are, you can easily use these builds and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first solo player build which is the permafrost prism. I personally have been playing this weapon for years now and it is my most favorite one because of its playstyle, the ability to be a real mage with the teleport ability and a huge outplay potential. And of course like all of my builds, this build is super high damage for both PvP and PvE. So if you're looking for one of the best frost staff builds as a solo player then this is the one for you. So then with that said, moving over to the build and for the weapon we want to go with the permafrost prism. So for your Q you pick the second option, then for your W pick the third option. And then lastly for your passive go with the aggressive caster which is the third option. Then for the helmet you want to use the royal cal and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the scholar's robe and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the boots go with the scholar's sandals and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your cape you pick the morgana cape and then lastly for your consumables you want to go with the poison potions and omelette. But then for alternatives specifically for pvp if you don't like the scholar sandals then go with the cleric sandals and this will give you another teleport ability and you want to pick the third ability and second passive. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So for the first Q spell we have the ice shard which drops the circle shaped ice that explodes dealing bunch of damage. Then the second W skill is called the frost nova and this ability teleports you and if you are right on the enemy while teleporting then you will stun the enemy and do a bit of damage. Then for our E skill we have the ice crystal which will shoot this crystal that in 4 meter range will stun enemies and then after the stun expires the crystal will explode and do huge AOE damage. Then for the next skill we have the speed caster and when you activate it we will receive 50% cast time reduction and all of our abilities will cast 70% less mana aka energy. Then for the D skill we have the perpetual energy and when using this ability it will give us energy cost reduction to zero. So after activating this in the next 15 seconds you can use as many skills as possible and all of them will cost zero energy. And then lastly for the F ability we have the focus run which is a simple mobility spell that will give us 70% movement speed and while using it we will receive energy each second and we will become immune to stuns, roots or any other slows. And then as far as your cape goes it will give us a passive that when we use our E ability it will automatically activate the cape which will give us additional 50% cast time reduction which is a huge bonus. So with all this said now let's move over to the rotation and PvE and PvP basically work the same way for this build. So then for your rotation at the beginning of the fight you want to activate the D skill and then use the E ability and then from here we just spam the Q button as much as possible. Then when you see that your speed slows down then now we activate the R ability and again just keep on spamming your Q button. Then when all of our abilities get on cooldown in the meantime we still keep using the Q spell while at the same time using the W and F ability for mobility to catch targets or run away from them. So then let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the D ability we will make our skills cast zero energy and then when we use the E skill it will activate our cape and we can spam our Q button for very quick and easy damage. Then when we slow down and our cape ends, then now is the time to use the R skill, because our other ability that gives us zero energy is still active. So like I said we use the R skill, which is the second speed boost, so we spam again the Q ability and that's about it. The main strength in this build lies in how much Q abilities you can use, and as we have a lot of energy reduction, teleport and a huge AoE spells, we basically have everything we need for any type of solo content. So then in my quick summary, if you are looking for in my opinion the most fun and the highest damage build in Albion Online 2023 then for sure check this one out and have fun. So then moving over to the second build which is the Hand of Core aka the Great Axe and this setup is the best solo player self healing build in Albion Online. 
so most of our abilities will give us a lifesteal, which means that when we activate our particular abilities in particular order, and then when we attack the enemies, we will receive healing back for each hit we do to the enemy. So if you're looking for the best solo lifesteal build, then this is the one for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon, we want to go with the hand of core. So for your Q, you pick the second option. Then for your W, pick the fourth option. And then lastly, for your passive, go with the deep cuts, which is the first passive. Then for the helmet, you want to use the mage cow and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor, go with the mercenary's jacket and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your boots, get the demon boots and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your cape, you pick the dead for cape. And then lastly for your consumables, you want to go with the poison potions and beefs too. But then for alternatives, specifically for PvE, if you don't like the demon boots, then you can go with the previous build, Scholar Sandals, and choose the third ability and second passive. And this as well will give you more movement speed and energy regeneration, which is what I use mainly for PvE dungeons. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best way to play this build. So for the first Q spell, we have the Rending Spin, which will swing your axe in 5 meter range, dealing AoE damage and applying a Rending Bleed to the enemy, which will make him bleed, give you a stack and make him take even more damage. Then the second W skill is called the Eternal Bleeding, which will again swing your axe in 6 meter range, but this time not only you will do damage, but make all the enemies bleed for another 8 seconds. Then the third skill is called the Whirlwind, which will make your character spin around while doing damage in 5 meter range. And as long as you're using this skill, you can't get interrupted. Then the R skill is called the Bloodlust, which after activating, it will give you 149 held back each time you hit the enemy. And this will last up to 6 times. Then the D skill is called Poison, which when you activate it, it will give you normal attacks a poison effect. So then afterwards, each time you hit the enemy with your basic attacks, you will be able to do very high damage over time. And then lastly, we have the Vengeful Sprint, which will increase your movement speed by 20% and attack damage by additional 4% for each 10% health that you are missing. So I usually use this spell when I'm around 50% HP, and this will give us a super boost in speed and damage. And then of course, let's not forget about our cape. And we are using the Ted for cape, which after every 15 seconds will do magical damage. So when you simply attack the enemy with your basic attacks, every 15 seconds, this will give us a nice extra damage in the background. So with all of this said, now let's move over to the rotation. And PvE and PvP basically work the same way. So then for your rotation, at the beginning of the fight you want to aggro a bunch of monsters, or just attack another solo player. Then afterwards use the rending spin, and then right after the internal bleeding. Then now activate the R ability, and then right after use the whirlwind. Then after all of your weapon skills are on cooldown, then now we activate the D skill. And then from here we keep on using your normal attacks, till your other abilities come back up. And then of course lastly when you're low health or in bad position, then we use the F ability and run away or towards the enemy. Or if you are just strictly doing PvE farming in dungeons, then like I said I recommend to use the scholar sandals and then just use the F ability to regain energy. So now let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while aggroing a lot of monsters or just finding a player, you will be able to clump up all of your targets and damage all of them all at once. So then we first will use the rending spin and internal bleeding to do AoE damage and make our enemies bleed. Then now we use the bloodlust which will activate our health restoration. And then now we use the whirlwind which not only will do AoE damage but make our bloodlust ability give us HP back. And then lastly from here, we just activate the poison spell to give our basic attacks the poison effect. And then we just keep on using the basic attacks to do damage till our other abilities come back up and that's about it. So then in my final summary, if you are looking for the best solo player build that not only will give you high damage but as well incredible self healing then this is the build for you. So then moving over to the last and final solo build which is the blood letter. And this build is mainly used for corrupted dungeons and open world PvP, but with few changes it can be useful for fame farming as well. So if you're looking for the best solo PvP and the fastest mobility build, then this is the one for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon, we want to go with the blood letter. So then for your Q, you want to pick the second option, then for your W, get the fifth option. And then lastly for your passive, select the deep cuts aka the first option. Then for your offhand, get the mist color. Then for the helmet, go with the Spectre's Hood and select the third ability and first passive. Then for the armor, get the Stalker's Jacket and select again the third ability and first passive. Then for your shoes, get the Scholar's Sandals and select the third ability and first passive. 
and then for the cap get the tet for cap and then lastly for your consumables get the poison potions and roast pork. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So for the first Q spell we have the deadly swipe which will leap towards the enemy dealing damage in 3 meter range and applying 1 assassin spirit stack. Then for the second skill we have the chain slash which will dash to the enemy hitting the target and if there are more than one target then you can dash multiple times. And of course on top of all of this while you're dashing you will become invisible and gain quick immunity. Then for the E skill we have the lunging stab which will again make you dash so with all of these dashes you can see why the bloodletter build is the fastest build in the game. And then as well when you use the E dash and if you dash through the enemies you will do a lot of damage and if the enemy is below 40% health then you will do 2 times as much damage and a lot of times this skill is used to one shot low health enemies. Then for the next skill we have the electric field which will give you this electric field in 6 meter range and if the enemy is standing in the field he will take a weak damage every 0.5 seconds. Then for the ability we have the flash of insight and when you activate it, it will reset the cooldown on your R skill. So by using this ability, we will be able to basically use the previous electric field two times in a row. And then lastly, we have the F ability called the Focus Run and that for Cape, which I already covered in the previous build. So with all this said, now let's move over to the rotation. And PvE and PvP work the same way. So then for your rotation, at the beginning of the fight you want to use the Q, then activate your R ability and then keep on using your normal attacks. Then when your electric field ends, then use the D skill to reset the cooldown on the field. So then right away activate it again. And then lastly, when the enemy is low health, use the lunging stab. And save the W for just more extra damage, or just take the advantage of the quick immunity and use it for defensive reasons. So now let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the Q spell, we will do damage and close the distance between us and the enemy. Then now we activated the R ability to deploy the electric field which will do a lot of AOE damage. Then from here we just keep on using normal attacks till the field ends. And then when it does we use the D skill to get the electric field once again. So then we use it again and then lastly to finish enemies we use the lunging stab and chain slash and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions. If you are looking for the fastest solo player build that will not only give you the ability to one shot enemies but will give you incredible speed to catch or run away from the enemies then this is the one for you so have fun. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. And while you are doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.